Avono Church was birthed by Nairobi Chapel in 2005 and was initially located in Nairobi's South Sea area. Driven by a desire to turn ordinary people into fearless influencers of society and an approach to attract and disciple the unchurched men and women of Nairobi, Mavuno quickly grew from 300 men and women in 2005 to a few thousand in just a few short years. By 2014, the church was bursting at the seams, running three weekend services on Saturday and Sunday, and with hardly any extra capacity to accommodate more people. Spurred on by their vision to see culture-defining churches planted across Africa and the gateway cities of the world, Mavuno Church had now multiplied into five congregations, three in Nairobi, Kenya, and one each in Kampala, Uganda, and Berlin, Germany. It became apparent to the leadership at Mavuno that there was need for a permanent headquarters from which to lead what was quickly becoming a global movement of churches. We recently caught up with Mavuno's senior pastor, Muredi Wanjao, to ask him about his experience at the Bellevue location and why Mavuno Church moved from there in the first place. The time at Bellevue was just a really good time. It was an exciting time. I mean, God did such powerful things. We saw many people got, get saved. Many people, I mean, the most unlikely people. I mean, people, every Sunday, there'll be people who were just the least likely people. People would come from the club and they would hear about Mavuno from their friends and they would come and every Sunday would see people getting saved, doing Mizizi and becoming transformed for life. Uh, Bellevue was a time that we began, we did a lot of intensive planting of churches across the nations. Uh, because as the church grew, we had the resources then to send out missionaries. And many of the churches, Mavuno churches that exist today, were planted because of what God was doing at Bellevue. Uh, and that was such an exciting uh, time for us. I mean, we were overwhelmed every weekend. I mean, there was just a growth uh, in the church and the impact that we were having on our city and many other cities. Uh, and so why did we move? It became very clear to me and to our leaders at that time, but particularly to me, I just began to feel that we must, we must uh, have a headquarters. It was so important that God had called us to start a global movement of churches that was going to impact the world. And with, even though Bellevue was a fantastic location, it was, there was a lot of impermanence in being in that rental space. And I just kept feeling that it was affecting the, the ability of the movement to do what God was calling us to do. So it became clear that we needed to get a headquarters, a place from which we could launch out missionaries that would go across the world and, and impact uh, the different nations. And I mean, they're great memories uh, from our time at Bellevue. Um, one of my, my favorite memories have to do with people. Because when I think about Bellevue, I think of many, many different people that I met. Uh, some of whom are watching this video, many people I watch uh, that I met then, whose lives were so transformed and now are transforming many other people's lives. Uh, a, good, a good example is Mike Onen uh, and Osai Onen. They, come, they uh, came, uh, had just relocated from Nigeria, moved to Uganda, their home country, uh, Mike's home country. And then they heard about Mavuno. I mean, I think they were just online and, and heard about Mavuno and they were so intrigued. They did their research, found out about us, and then just came over, just boldly said, we want to learn. We want to be part of what God is doing. And uh, long story short, uh, they joined our team, uh, came on as worship leaders. Uh, Mike led worship uh, at Bellevue and at, uh, at Hill City. Osai was involved in worship as well and youth ministry. And boy just to see them grow to see them have such an influence and today uh, i see them out leading mavuno kampala the movement of churches that is in kampala uh, their network leaders there and they're having such a huge impact it's just great to see so many people being influenced uh, through them by them and the work that that church has been able to do and i just say my goodness thank god uh, for the opportunity he gave us to raise so many leaders who are now impacting across the nations Following our conversation with the senior pastor, we were so intrigued by their incredible leader known as Michael Onen, and we knew that we had to go look for him. We had to hear about his experience of his time at the Bellevue location and later at the Hill City headquarters. We got our team ready, packed our bags, and took the next flight out to Kampala, Uganda, just so we could meet with Pastor Michael Onen. Well, I served at Bellevue as a worship pastor and then I later became um, services pastor and I loved every bit of it. I had a front row seat to see what God was doing at Mavuno Church. I loved the opportunity just to see destinies change and just to see life, um, uh, to see transformation happen. 
in the life of, of, of a lot of people. I mean, I was also part of the strategy team that just crafted and worked on the communication to help us move uh, from Bellevue to Hill City, where we are. When we moved to Hill City, there was nothing but bare ground and just dust and man bushes and and just to see God's word come to pass right before our eyes man it almost brings tears to my eyes and while we're at Hill City my family and I were sent out to plant churches in UG and because of the ministry at Hill City we have three churches in Uganda and hopefully more to come I mean it's just important that we are part of the Free the Future campaign because we're able to free up resources to help us do more ministry. There's so much more outreach and discipleship that needs to happen. We need to plant more churches, more celebration points for fellowship and for gathering. And we also need to just establish more hub churches to finance this work of ministry that we're doing right now. But very importantly also is just to secure the legacy for future generation. I'm talking about securing the church for our kids, our kids, kids, and our kids, kids, kids. And that's why I'm part of the Free the Future campaign. And if you are watching, I want you to go to the website or to a location near you, make a pledge and be a part of turning ordinary people into fearless influences of society.